Welcome to a walkthrough of the Padabit Quantify platform. Uh, this is a cloud-based platform. We do recommend using the Chrome browser and you can navigate to the quantify.padabit.com URL and that will take you to the start of the Quantify application. There is no installation required and no initial uh, setup beyond creating an account. Uh, you can create an account here using the register button and fill out this form. Uh, this will immediately start your two week completely free no credit card trial. Uh, once you've created an account you can go ahead and log in here. So I'm going to go and log in as myself. Once you've logged in, uh, you're immediately met by the estimate management screen. So this is where companies can go and create the folder structures and estimates that uh, however uh, you would proceed in your company with managing your uh, estimate organization. Uh, I personally like to organize by year, um, but we'll go ahead and create a new folder here. So you can use the right click button or you can use uh, the buttons up here. I'll create a new folder first. and hit create and then in this folder I will create a new estimate. When you create an estimate you can select a template to create it from and this will copy certain things in uh, the key items being uh, the breakdowns uh, and such so if you have kind of a, a specific client that likes things a certain way all the time uh, or you have a you know company standard that you like to break your estimates down you can create a template for that there is a default template that comes with uh, uh, your initial account sign up you can keep that one modify it or discard it uh, whatever you would like I'm going to use the default template when I create this estimate here. So we'll just hit create and then we'll expand out the folder and you'll see the estimate here. Clicking on the estimate opens up the estimate details view. In here you can fill in the standard information for site visit dates, uh, closing dates, and completion dates for the project. And this is just some metrics to help track the project with as you bid it. Uh, then you can select your labor book, pricing services, and units of measure. Uh, we also have the ability in here to track your bid lists. So if you want to use this feature, you can enter in We've got uh, companies in here. You can enter in the details for the person uh, and contacts. We enter in this quickly here and hit add, you'll see it populates this list. You can add as many companies as you would like to this list. Once the estimate is closed and you receive feedback on it, you can select the positioning uh, for the bid and uh, the people that you bid to. This allows the uh, metrics to be pulled out later on uh, and understood for estimate performance within your company. Down here, we have the ability to enter in documentation, so drawings, specifications, uh, whatever documents you want to upload pertinent to this estimate. Uh, right now, the file format that is used is PDF, so I'll go ahead and bring in a drawing set here, and I will drag my drawing set onto this box here. Once you drag your drawing set on, it will go ahead and upload it into the platform. As mentioned, you can also upload specifications and other PDF documentation. At any time, you can add documents here. So if addenda are received or changes, you can just drag and drop them in and they will become part of your document tree. Once this is configured, you can select the open uh, estimate button up here and this will launch you into the estimate. Now that you're in the estimate, uh, there's a few navigational items down the left hand side here. You have your drawings, your estimate items, uh, our items database and assemblies databases, and our breakdowns. Clicking on the drawings menu here, this opens up your whole document tree. So any documents that you had brought in will show up in here. Clicking on one of these, it will open up. It takes the, the system a moment the first time you open a drawing, and it will open it up in the viewer here. Uh, you can rename the drawings in here. It does try to get the titles of the drawings itself, but uh, it's about 50% successful at that, depending on the nature of the PDF. But it's as simple as just clicking this button here, and we can rename this. And we can click on the next one here. And this is our lighting drawing. And 
If you've used other PDF viewers and editors before, uh, this is very similar. Left click to drag in uh, around the drawing and navigate, and we've got the zoom with the mouse wheel or the zoom bar down here, or whatever is convenient. Continuing down the left hand side here, we have our estimate items. So these are very simple, uh, one off, pertinent to this estimate sort of items here that uh, the estimator can create and assign uh, individual values to. So we can call this special panel 01, for example. We could add in some notes, careful installation. And we can assign a value for labor and material, select the type of tool we want to use for its takeoff, and set a color for it. So these are independent uh, one-off sort of items on here. And once you've created that, you can simply double click on it and start a takeoff with it. Continuing down here is our estimate uh, items database. So this includes all the trades that are available in Quantify. Right now the focus is on electrical. There is uh, some mechanical in here and more will be coming, uh, but it's a fairly comprehensive electrical database right now. Uh, you can also use the quick search feature here, which is a text-based search. So if you're looking for individual items, for example, cable tray, uh, you can quickly pull up uh, the items in the database that have that keyword in them. So for example, ladder tray or tech, you can just bring up those items very quickly without needing to navigate through the entire tree. Uh, assemblies, uh, very similar. Uh, we have our standard assemblies list, uh, which is largely again based around electrical right now. Um, so you've got all of your standard uh, assemblies in here and we also have uh, controls and VAS being entered in. On the breakdowns, these are, uh, we call them um, data buckets. So basically these are where you can assemble your estimate uh, into various different data buckets. These are named here uh, to make it a little more intuitive, but you can use them for any sort of um, data entry that you would want for your estimate. Uh, when I select this drop down box here, these are pre-populated right now out of the template that I selected. If you had no template, these would all be blank like this, and you could completely enter them in uh, custom however you would want. Uh, so I'm going to select distribution here. Uh, I'm going to scroll down to a spec section, for example, and we're going to enter in a bid form item. We'll call this lump sum. If you don't enter something in here and you start performing takeoff, it just sets a default one for you. And then location, we'll call this main floor. And we've entered in um, the initial information for this area of the estimate. Down here is the audit trail. So this is where everything that you take off will be uh, issued out as a, an audit for how the estimate is progressing. On the right hand side are some quick items here that will dramatically uh, improve uh, how fast takeoff can be performed. So we have quick item pads. Quick item pads are just shortcuts into the database. Companies can create custom quick item pads. There are a set that also comes when you sign up and you can edit those, delete those, do whatever you would like on them. And basically it's just drag and drop to bring in information. So if I were to grab a device assembly here, uh, we can go with BX for example, drag this over it creates a button in here. You can then click on that button to assign various different icons to it, set its takeoff colors. Uh, if it was a line-based takeoff, you can add in uh, the various different line thicknesses for it. And then you can assign an actual tool to take it off by simply dragging the tool onto it and set a name for your quick item pad and save it. As mentioned, uh, anything out of the items database or assemblies database can be assigned to a quick item pad. There is a list of quick item pads that comes out of the box pre-populated. For example, this is a residential distribution quick item pad. 
Uh, we also have, for example, grounding, some conduit, and EMT, and these can all be edited by the user. Any quick item pad that is created or edited is global to your company. So you can set the standards for all of your estimators if you have multiple estimators in your organization. You can set up the quick item pads for the work methodology that you would want to see in your estimates. Uh, we also have notes here for, or tools here for annotating drawings and taking quick measurements. So it's as simple as adding in some notes here. For example, difficult access maybe. And you can set the sizes for this and the colors for your notes. And then simply hit the green checkbox. And that note is now added to this drawing. And all of these notes are visible across all of the estimators again in your company that may be working on this bid. Now moving into takeoff. So there are a couple of methods for performing takeoff in Quantify. I'm going to start with uh, these plugs here, for example. I'm going to click on my quick item pad, select a wire gauge, and these, these are assemblies and all of the assemblies are formula driven. So they will ask specific questions on what you would like for the various options. Companies can create their own assemblies using our database up here. Uh, when you create your own assemblies or items in the database, they are proprietary to your company. Nobody else sees it. Anything that Padabid puts in, whether it's items or assemblies, are global and everybody can see and use those. So it allows maximum flexibility for companies to customize their workflow however they want. So I'm going to add a 10 foot drop here for this plug and I'm going to start counting these. So very quick, you can start to take off items on the drawings and then I'm going to right click to complete that. When I right click, it is assigned down into the audit trail and you'll see my count come in here. Now this is the, the manual method of taking off. If you're working on design build and you're looking to do layouts, um, if you just have an architectural layout, uh, this is how you would typically proceed using the assemblies and items. However, if you have a uh, already pre-organized and pre-laid out drawing here, you can use our rapid count feature. So again, selecting that duplex plug, I'm gonna click on the robot icon here and that's going to switch us into rapid count mode. I'm then going to highlight this symbol that I want to count and hit commit. When you hit commit, it will say, give you the status updates in the bottom left here. So you'll see that it's been sent over to our server. Our server has picked it up and is starting to work through the image. While, you're, uh, while it's doing this, you can go ahead and add in other ones. So for example, I can take off this junction box here. We'll plug in the values for this, switch to rapid count mode, and I will highlight this junction box. And then hit commit. And now you'll see that our queue length has gone up to one here, meaning that one job is being worked on, and there is one in the queue. It takes about a minute for the server to process that. You can also switch drawings and start working on other drawings while it's going. But in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and set a scale on this drawing, so we can do some length-based measurements here. In this platform, all scales must be set from a known dimension. This is to ensure that any adjustments made to the, the drawing set in PDF form while it's been going through the client or the engineers do not affect the final length measurements. So to do this, I'm going to take a measurement on the drawing. So we'll click this door, for example, and then I'm going to set its actual distance. This will apply the scale to the drawing. And now that that's completed, you'll see down in the bottom left here that the rapid count has finished for the first rapid count that we sent over, and it's working on the second one. I'm going to hit this refresh drawing button, and you'll see the counts come up for all of those plugs. Now the, uh, the system is, uh, it's not 100% accurate, but we do strive to improve its accuracy uh, all the time, and it's fairly reasonable. You'll see down here that uh, there was a couple of plugs missed here. I can go ahead and manually add those in, uh, or you can alternatively rerun the, uh, the search on these plugs to pick up more. And then I'm gonna hit commit on that. And now I see that the second one is finished here. So I'm going to refresh the drawing again, and the junction boxes are now in here. 
However, one there has also been missed, so I'll just quickly add that one in. Now that I have these plugs in, uh, one of the notes uh, on this drawing, the designer used the same symbol for all plugs and then applied tags to differentiate. So for example, this is a waterproof GFI. What we can do here is we can actually rerun the count. So I'll select the robot again and I will highlight the tag. And we have this checkbox here, replace overlapping counts. And essentially what that does is the system is going to search the drawing for this tag and anywhere where it overlaps a plug, it's going to replace that plug with the new GFI style plug. So I'm gonna hit commit and send that over. And while that's now searching and updating my drawing, uh, we're gonna take off a feeder here from this panel, for example. So grabbing my feeder, uh, again, this is an assembly. I'm going to select a, a small feeder here, several conductors, inch and a quarter, we're only going to have one run of it. We'll have a drop length down to the panel of eight feet this time, and we're going to allow for a three foot whip inside the panel. And then I can simply click on that and start to go. And you'll see in the bottom right here, the length measurement automatically updates. And I'll run it out to this area here, for example. Left click and then right click to finish the takeoff. And you'll see that that is added in down here. Now returning to uh, the status over here, you'll see that it's gone ahead and it's removing the overlaps and it's added in the new GFI plugs for us. So if I press refresh drawing here, we will see that it has gone around found the plugs here that are the GFI tag and replaced the initial plug with the new GFIs. Now this does require that it can detect an overlap. So it's done fairly well here, uh, but for example, it's missed a couple down here, but we can very quickly just click on that plug and hit delete ourselves. And you'll see that it automatically updates in the audit trail here. So when I delete that, we drop down to 124 plugs and we have our GFI plugs now taken off and we've removed the duplicates. Another uh, unique feature that we have is uh, we call this blueprinting. Uh, we can take off certain items. So we're gonna run a, uh, a branch into this room, for example. Um, so we can switch over to BX here we're going to grab a BX branch line here. And you would typically home run this. This isn't exactly accurate, but uh, it, it shows how the system works. And we don't need a drop length on this one because I'm just going to draw it into the room here and then right click to finish. And we can then put a, again, a box in here. So I'm going to go to the items database for this one to just show how this works. We're going to look for uh, octagonal box for example and we'll take off one of these and we'll put it at the end here and maybe another one here right click on that and then we're going to want uh, some BX connectors here we're going to make these 3 8 size and what we're doing is we're setting up a very quick uh, assembly here and then I'm going to hit commit on that and then for our main here we had some EMT we're going to want some EMT connectors on here Oop, got to select the size on that that was an inch and a quarter run and we'll hit commit so now what you can do is we've got the branch line running into the room here we can then left click and highlight all of these items here right click on this and select copy and this essentially builds a one-off assembly we can then go around and you can use the R button to rotate this for example pressing R we're going to rotate it into here and we can then add in all of our branches and you could then home run from here or however you would like to proceed with the estimate right clicking to complete that and it's going to assemble all of those audit rows down here for us based on what we had selected. Moving on to some lighting. 
If we go to our lighting drawing now, tagged items are a unique feature in Quantify. Uh, you can use the estimate items here to create one-off tag items. Uh, we don't necessarily recommend that. Um, it is an option if that's what you're used to. But if I switch over to my light fixtures, for example, here, and I select uh, one of these light fixtures, you'll see there is this tagged entry here. Now tags are special items in the database that are text items that you can assign to any assembly. And when you do that, uh, what it does is it allows you to bring the tag in as part of that assembly. So I'm going to allow a five foot drop length here. I'm going to call this my FR1. And then I'm going to use rapid count on this. I'm going to highlight this fixture here. Now what you want to do is find symbols that are quite different from each other. It's, it's very good at finding the differences in symbols. If you have a lot of symbols that are very similar to each other, it won't be as good at picking that up. Um, but here we've got a, a lot of very different symbols on the drawing. Uh, so I'm going to hit commit here and send off my FR1s to be rapid counted. And then I'm going to select uh, my FS2s next. We're going to set these to be 2 lamp, 200 watt fixtures, for example. FS2, again, drop length of 5. And I'm going to select, uh, let's use this symbol here to count these. And then hit commit on that. This is going to be processed by the server. While it's processing, you could, of course, also start to take off your switches and other essential items. Uh, you can queue this up while any of the other drawings are searching and go grab a coffee and then come back and keep going with it. Um, but right now, we're going to just give this a moment to finish the initial count there. There we go. Hit refresh. And we can see that it has picked up uh, the majority of the FR1s. There are a few that are missing, so we can very quickly just grab any one of them. Hit copy. We're going to paste that one on there. And then down here, for example, we've got highlight the item, copy. Move down here. It's very quick to update any of these kind of missed items here and then right click to finish that other copy. And you'll see that it's coming into our audit trail right here. And now our FS2s have also been counted and it's done quite well. There's a couple of FS2s that it's missed. So we'll do the same thing here. Just copy one of the other ones and make sure that it looks like it's done quite well on the FS2s. And what you'll see is this tag column here. This tag column tells you what tag was assigned to each one of these items. This tag will also show up as a tag item list on summary. So if we switch over to the summary screen now, clicking on this, this is your whole bill of materials for the project. Now it will take a minute for it to populate here. There we go. And you can sort by any of the columns up here. So I'm going to sort on description. And what this is going to do is this is going to group together all of the like items um, that I've taken off. So here's all of my EMTs. And what you get here is, for example, your tag list. So we have 53 FR1s, 33 FS2s, and any of your other fixture tags that you brought in. You can then very quickly export this to Excel. And then click on this to open it up in Excel, bring it onto the screen here, an Excel list of your takeoff. So you can very quickly go ahead and delete the columns that aren't relevant. So we'll delete these. And then we can select the rows that we don't really need to send out to the supplier. Delete this. Delete this and then save this. And you can see within a couple of minutes here, we've been able to generate a, a pretty solid tag list of FR1s and FS2s to send out for quotation. I'm going to go ahead and close that now. There are several other unique features 
on the summary screen here. Number one is we have partnered with Suderman to bring in their estimating manual in its entirety with, for example, its notes and assumptions. So if you see this little icon here, when you hover over it, it will tell you what the basis of that labor is. Um, so for example, couplings are included in the conduit run, 15% for runs less than 25 feet, and you know if you need a hydraulic bender, allow two hours to set that up. And then uh, down here on the actual coupling, it tells you, for example, this is supposed to be zero hours because the labor for it is included in the main runs. And we've brought in uh, any of those notes that form the basis of labor. Uh, we also have our built-in pricing service. So this is updated monthly uh, right now. It is a list pricing service. And you can see in this column the last time that it was updated. Uh, so this is basically used for budgeting and change order purposes. Uh, you can override any of the values in here. So when you go out and get a quote for EMT conduit, for example, that price may come back at 300 instead of 655 here. So I'll just type in 300 here and hit enter. And you'll see that that whole row is now highlighted in yellow. That means that it has been manually overridden. You can override the discounts and enter those in instead if that's what you're more used to estimating with. And the same applies to the labor. Right clicking on the row also allows you to reset the row to whatever was in the database. So we can very quickly go along and enter in any of the values um, if we've got, you know, device boxes and such that uh, we've got pricing on, um, any of the items in here, you can very quickly go and uh, enter any of your quotations in on this screen for your, your mainline materials. You can also summarize this screen. So if I right click and select the summarize option here, you're given a list of uh, options to summarize by. I'm gonna select drawing for this one because we did uh, work on two drawings there and hit summarize. The system will then go and break out your bill of materials according to that breakdown. So you'll see I've got my distribution and lighting here and I can select the lighting for example and this will be my entire bill of materials for that drawing. And you can also export this again to Excel. Uh, you'll also find your extended pricing here. So this is the, the consolidated material pricing for this drawing and the labor breakout for it also. Moving on into closeout. Closeout operates similar to summary in that you select a breakdown. So I'm gonna select the drawing and then it generates an Excel template for you. So I'm gonna hit uh, that Excel button and the system is then going to go and break this down. Here we go. It has created the template for me. I'm going to just click on that to open up the template and then I'm going to drag it onto the screen. So in here, You've got your breakdown that you selected. So that's your materials, your labor columns for the book value labor. You can then factor this labor if your crew performs better. Uh, if you start to accidentally enter in pretty aggressive values, it will notify you of that. And then you can set up for your extended field labor. Down here, you can enter in your labor rate. You can enter in any material taxes. Uh, we can go in ahead and enter in any sort of equipment and general expenses here. Forklift, for example, we're gonna make that 2,500 bucks. We've got our lighting quote. We'll enter in something for that, maybe some PM time for this project a controls subcontractor and then we can select our markup that we want to apply to it. Uh, there are a couple of modifiers in here, cash allowances, bonding, financing, etc. These are just straight numbers. There are no markups applied to them. And then we can go, there's several tabs along the bottom here. We can go to our breakdown tab. This is where it generates a weighted breakdown for each of the items that you selected. Now, the money in here can be moved around however you'd like. So if I, for example, delete that, you'll see it ends up in the, the deviation amount here. And I can just go add that in. 
and move all of my material costing, for example, to the lighting breakdown if uh, so needed for this project. And then on the stats page, there is just a simple breakdown of uh, how the project is working out. So this project is predominantly a labor project, so it's a little bit of a higher risk project. So going back to the front end here, I may want to make this a 10% markup on it, just to cover off some risk. Uh, this then becomes your total bid price for the project, and you can save this document as your record of bid for it. Returning back to the application for a moment here, when you go to send out your quote, uh, it may be beneficial, especially if you're working again in design build, to send the marked up drawings with it. Uh, also, it uh, is beneficial to be able to break out drawings and specifications to send out for pricing. So we have this button up here that allows you to extract pages to a separate PDF. When you click on that, it's going to bring up your document tree. So this can be drawings, the specifications, anything that you had dragged in here. I'm going to select these two drawings here, and I'm going to say, call this marked up drawings. The order in which you check off items in here is the order that they show up in the new PDF. Uh, and if you had had your specification loaded in here, you can actually check off anything between the various packages. It will automatically extract them and consolidate them into one new PDF. So you could grab the drawings and append the specifications that are relevant right to it, and then hit save. It's going to take a moment now on the server to generate the new PDF for you. And once it's done that, you get a link here. You can click on that link and it will download the PDF for you right away. And there is my marked up drawing set. So again, if you're working with uh, an architectural layout and you're doing your own layouts, this can be a very powerful way of sending information back to the client on what you've carried in the estimate. That document also shows up in your document list here. And then if I go back to the main estimate and click on that to refresh it, you'll see the marked up drawings PDF show up here also, and I can re-download that at any time in the future. Thank you very much for taking a few minutes to review the Quantify estimating platform. We look forward to hearing from you. If you want more information, patabid.com is our website, p-a-t-a-b-i-d.com.